Hello, thank you, welcome. My name is Thomas Mergel, and this is the review for Agoraphobic Nosebleed's newest album, Arc. Now, I first want to start off these reviews. This is the first review for 2016. I'm going to be kind of taking a new, a slightly different format. I'm testing this right now. I don't know if I'm just going to go straight voice with maybe some pictures in the background of album art and other tidbits, but... Um, I think I'm just going to go back and forth so it's not just my damn face in every single video. Because what's important is the commentary. The commentary in, uh, of of what I've been listening to and the review to be had. Now, um, first off, I'm going to just get rid of the facts and the PR tidbits. Um, Agoraphobic Nosebleeds ARC will be released on Relapse Records on January 22nd, 2016. Um, and infamous extreme metal instigators, agoraphobic nosebleed, have returned for the, with the first in a series of four EPs, because that's trendy all of a sudden, designed to decimate your total being. Led by the distinctive howl of vocalist Cat Cats, agoraphobic nosebleed has unleashed a crushing three-song onslaught of misanthropic musical violence. Simply titled, Ark. The over 25 minute long sludge fueled feast finds agoraphobic nosebleeds sounding heavier, doomier, and more destructive than ever before. Believe it. Each EP in the series will represent the musical influences and tastes of each member, which is very interesting. Um, details on the others will be revealed at a later date, uh, with ARC being officially unveiled. On January 22nd, 2016. Now that is the little PR tidbit that I have that was given to me. Uh, pretty decent. Uh, some interesting facts there about it being a series of EPs, which has been a thing with several bands. Um, some bands don't continue. They release an EP or two and then they stop. But uh, <clears throat> down. Um, and then... Uh, and then I want to get back to, after the, the facts and the PR tidbits, I want to go into the actual subjective part of the review and what I thought about. Um, so here you go. You may know Agoraphobic Nosebleed is one of the best or possibly even overhyped and overrated grindcore acts in the world. I don't mean that in a bad way, but anytime anybody talks about grind, they're talking about Agoraphobic Nosebleeds most of the time. It, it's definitely brought up, especially in the the... DIY setting because they are just pioneers and making it sound good and making it heavy. Uh, and, you know, depending on who you ask, that is, it's just, it could be overhyped or just incredibly blissful masterpieces. Um, being one of the better bands to utilize a drum machine successfully and making chaotic music to go along with it, Agoraphobic Nosebleed has been an inspiration to all these bands who create grind or, you know, even the huge influence at uh, one man band, do it at home, do it yourself, slam and deathcore albums that have been coming out over the last eight to ten years. Um, you know, you could release something heavy, not even leave your house. I think Agoraphobic Nosebleed is one of the first bands to actually do something like that and make it sound fucking great. Uh, the packed lineup of Scott Hull, Catherine Katz, John Jarvis, Richard Johnson, and Jay Randall have returned with a new album called Ark. And with that, they abandon everything that they have done in the past and what you might know about them, and they stuck with a style of music just known as sludge. If you want grindcore or anything just sem just fucking way chaotic, you're really not going to find it here. Um, sludge isn't even a surprise when it comes to grind, as you may know. When grindcore bands turn on the tempo and they want to jam a little bit, they usually, for the most part, get to a grooving sludge riff. Um, sometimes they'll have a slower song in between the chaotic grindcore tracks. Um, I don't know why this is, but uh, the typical groove, the bends, the hooks, uh, the riffs, they always end up sounding like something great from just Southern America. Not South America, just Southern American sludge and then the whole NOLA thing. Um, you know, trying to get their pothead friends and fans to jump and bounce with the rhythms that they have provided. While Agoraphobic may be hitting those marks with ease on this release, I feel that these songs are just riffs and tracks that could have been filler in between their usual chaotic grindcore sound. Um, obviously, um, 
but they, I mean, just getting rid of the grind is stuck with the sludge doom doom sound, and uh, it it when it's on a grind album, it's a nice back and forth for their audience, but uh, I wasn't honestly in the mood to be hearing these sludge songs. Uh, musically, this is on the heavier side of sludge, as the tone is undeniably rough as hell. Uh, this is some good headbanging music. Katz's vocals over this slower churn music fits in rather well. These three songs are enjoyable, but definitely lacking in the memorable department. I listened to this about three or four times in one day, and um, the next day I listened to it again, and I just I I thought it was it was good, but it was just in the okay department. If you're a fan of if you're a fan of sludge metal or just a devoted agoraphobic nosebleed fan, then you'll love this. Fans of grindcore and um, if you're expecting something just chaotic and heavy, a little way more hectic, uh, you may be pissed off. Uh, I've been waiting for something just incredibly fiery from these guys, and I will admit, after listening to this, uh, it was okay, but I was kind of just let down. After listening to this, I wasn't really gratified or thrilled with what I heard, and so there you have it. Ark is a good sludge a- album, but it's a rather meh album from Agoraphobic Nosebleed. I give Ark a 6 out of 10. I'll put links down below for the band's Facebook page and whatnot, so maybe you can go listen to this. I don't know if they've released it yet for, uh, you know, an early stream like some bands do. It comes out in 10 days, so it might be it might be unleashed somewhere on Revolver or Decibel or something. You never know. So uh, thank you for listening. Um, I'll be returning soon with more reviews. Uh, next up, I have reviews for Kralis's uh, uh, latest album, the new Lycus album, Frozen Ocean, Voidcraft, Deformatorium, and The Lion's Daughters. So thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. Thank you for your patience as well, because I kind of went on a small hiatus. I was busy with Thanksgiving, busy with my daughter's birthday, and all of a sudden December hit, and I was just incredibly just overwhelmed with work and everything, and I just took an un an unexpected hiatus for a good month. So this is the return. 2016 is going to be awesome, and I'll see you in the next review. Take care.